Hello friends, happy Monday. We're starting a brand new lesson this week. We're still working with fractions, of course, but now we're going to be focusing on fractions on a number line. So we're going to get started. So to start off, what unit fraction is each part of this whole? Now remember, a unit fraction has a one in the numerator and then whatever number However many total number of pieces this model has is our denominator. A unit fraction, you still need a numerator and a denominator. That was an issue I saw on the independent practices last week. You saw the word unit fraction, and you just put answer of a 1. That's not correct because you need the denominator for it to be a fraction. So what unit fraction is each part of this whole? Well, we know it's going to have a 1 in the numerator. So if we're talking about this one box, What's going to be our denominator? Well, that's easy. One, two, three. So this little piece is going to be one third. And because a fraction has to have equal parts, that also means that this part is one third and this part is one third, and they all add together to create three thirds or one whole. Now, what fraction of the whole is shaded? That's when we go in and we count the blue squares comparing to the white, and two out of the three are shaded, so two thirds is the fraction. So now, this number line shows whole numbers. The distance from each number is the next, each number to the next, sorry, is one whole number. Complete the number line by filling in the missing number labels. So this is very similar to a traditional number line, no fractions yet, just getting us thinking about how a number line is set up. So if we start at zero, what is the next whole number? One, then we're just gonna count on. So then the next one would be two, and the next one would be three. Because here we're just talking about whole numbers. We're not talking about fractions. Again, it's just to get you thinking about the number line. So we have one, two, three. Easy peasy, right? So fractions are the numbers that name parts of a whole. So the fractions are what appear in between the whole number. So in this case, in between zero and one. So you can show fractions on a number line, and the number line below is between zero and one and divided into equal parts. Label each part of the area model with the unit fraction it represents. Now again, unit fraction, that word popped up again, that means that there's gonna be a one in our numerator, but we still need a denominator. So if we have one, two, three, four equal parts, and we need a unit fraction, that means that this is going to be one over four, this little piece is going to be one over four, and this little piece is going to be one over four because we have four equal parts, four dashed on a number line, so we know we have to be working with a denominator of 4, and of course, as always, unit fraction 1 is our numerator. So if you look, we have 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, and if you add them up, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, and we know that if the numerator and denominator are the same, we have a whole number. So you can count fractions on a number line just like you can count whole numbers. So if we have 1, 2, 3, 4 in whole numbers, it would be 1 fourth, then you would fill in the next, the next, the next. So if we have one plus one, it would go here, add another one, go here, add another one, and we get to four fourths or one whole. So you need to fill in what you believe would go there. So if you need to pause, but like they said, you're counting just like you would count whole numbers. So it would be one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. And now you can count by fourths on the number line to label the number line. So one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. And as we can see, four fourths is also the same as one whole. Now this one gets a little trickier because we have not just one set of whole numbers, but two sets of whole numbers. So as you can see, if we're dealing with fourths, our numerator is going to become larger than our denominator. It looks scary, but it is more than okay for that to happen, so bear with me. So, you can also use number lines to show fractions greater than one. So we're gonna complete the number line below by filling in the missing fraction label. So this part, zero to one, is the same as we just did on the other slide. So it's gonna be one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, and we know that after that it becomes one because the numerator and denominator are the same. But, what is four fourths plus one fourth? You're just adding a one to the numerator, so it would become 5 fourths. You're going to continue counting in that normal traditional pattern. So 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, and 8 fourths. 
and eight fourths is just the same as saying two. Because guess what? Little division hint here. What is eight divided by four? You know this one. Two. So this fraction bar can also act as a division bar when you need it to check your work. So again, we're just going to be counting regular. So we're going to go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to be our numerators all the way through because we're just adding a one. These unit fractions are just adding a one to the next one, adding a one, adding a one. The denominator stays the same. We do not change our denominator. It stays a four the entire time. The only thing that's changing is the one because we are continuously adding one to our numerator. So you can see the answer there. It is more than okay to have a bigger number in your numerator. It is okay. It is okay. Is it okay? Do not flip it. Do not flip it. Okay, so now, if we look at the num the fraction of the number line, why do we think that the numerator and denominator are the same in the fraction that names one whole? And we said that. So we know that if the numerator and denominator are the same, it is equal to one because we have all four of our total pieces. And again, little fraction trick, not fraction, the division. What's four divided by four? One. So that's another way you can check to see if you have one whole, if you forget the rule that if the numerator and denominator are the same, then you have a whole number. So a possible answer for your exit ticket today is if you have four parts of a shape and there are only four parts in the shape, then you have the entire shape. And that's what we kind of talked about in that last problem. So that is it for today's math slides. You are all set to move on to your next activity. I hope walking through these are helpful, and I hope that you're able to understand the number line a little bit better now that we're able to break it apart together. And if you need anything, let me know I'm here. Have a great Monday. I miss you.